Hello, and welcome to this tutorial. To get started, open any web browser, and in the search bar, type terrain dot party. Hit search. This will open a map of the world, with a small square to select the area. This tool can generate a height map of the selected area. Height map, as the name indicates, contain information of height of a terrain. You can increase and decrease the size of the selection area. And once you are happy, you can simply click on the download button to download the height map of that area. I am quickly going to choose the region that I will be using for this tutorial. You can choose your own if you want, or you can follow mine. Once you have selected your region, click on the download button. It will ask you to type a name for the area. Choose any name for it. And click OK. It will then download a zip file. Proceed to unzip that file and open it. As you can see, it will have four different types of height map. You can read the information in this notepad about all these four different types of height map. In short, it recommends using the one with merged in its name. I also find it the most accurate, and we will be using this one for this tutorial. Now that we have the height map, it is time to start 3ds Max. In 3ds Max, start by creating a plane. Go to the Modify panel and adjust some of its parameters. Make sure to keep the length and width same to keep it consistent with the resolution of the height map. Also, for a terrain to be realistic, the segment's number should be high as well. Here are my values. It is always a good idea to move your object to the origin position. Now, with the plane selected, open the modifier list. And add a displace modifier. Then, click on the None button, under Bitmap. Select the height map with merged in its name, that we have downloaded earlier. Now, increase the strength to whatever you like. I have increased the blur as well, to make the terrain look a bit smooth. You can use these values. We have now got a fairly good looking terrain from our height map. The next thing to do is to texture it. So for that, open the material editor. Then, double click on the standard in the material list to create a standard material. If you double click on this newly created material, its properties will appear on the right side of the material editor. To apply this material to our terrain, select the terrain first. Then right click on the material and select Assign Material to Selection. With the material applied, we will now change a few of its basic setting to make it a bit more appealing. This includes giving it a bit of shine to make the details more visible and increasing self-illumination because we won't be using any light source here. Now, we will be applying textures on this terrain based on different levels of height. For this purpose, we will use a map called Gradient Tramp. Double-clicking on it will create a Gradient Tramp map in the view window. To connect it with our material, simply drag a wire from the Gradient Ramp map into the diffuse color channel of that material. Double-click on the map to view its parameters. In the parameters, the first thing you might want to do is to change the gradient type from linear to mapped. It will then ask you to select a source map. Click on None button. Then double click on the bitmap to select a map file. Select the same height map that we are using. We have selected our source map, 
however the results will not show up in the viewport and you will have to render your scene to view them. To render the scene, click on the Render Production button at the top. The results here are very obvious. The area of the terrain with maximum height is white and the area with no height is completely black. While the rest of the area has color between white and black. This means that we can assign different colors to different height level of the terrain. To assign a different color, we need to change the color of these flags. New flags can also be added by clicking anywhere on this gradient. To change the color, double click on the flag and it will open the color selector. I am going to use strong colors for demonstration purposes. With the colors selected, if we render it now, you will see how it works. You can produce some interesting results with it. I am going to quickly select some colors before moving on to the next step. As you can see, I have selected some relatively realistic colors for my terrain. You can select what works best for you. Let's do a quick render. With proper choice of colors you can produce powerful results. Another thing you want to do is to go back to the original material. Click on the map's rollout. And add a bump map. Choose the bitmap and select the same height map that we have used throughout this tutorial. Increase the bump amount to a ridiculously high value. If you render it now, the bump map has increased the details and it looks much nicer than before. Another thing you can do is add textures to each of these flags. To do that, Click and drag the bitmap from the maps list to the view window. It will immediately ask you to select a texture from your computer. I have downloaded a few textures to choose from. Once you have selected a texture, attach it to a flag of your choice. In my case, I have chosen the first flag, meaning that the area with zero height will have this texture. I can confirm this by doing a render. Right now the texture has to be scaled down. You can double click the texture and increase the tiling amount from its properties. Now it looks a bit better. Similarly, you can add textures for the rest of the flags. I have attached another texture to my second flag, however, if I render this scene, you might notice that the texture is not being displayed here. Ideally, this region here should have been displaying the texture as that corresponds to the second flag. Similarly, if I add another texture, the results aren't very different. This is because the flags here depending upon how you have created them may or may not be arranged according to their names. Which means that this might be flag 1, however flag 2 might not be the second one. To get round this problem, simply right click on a flag and select edit properties. Here you will find the correct name of the flag. As you can see this is flag number 4, despite it being in the second place. So, we need to attach the texture accordingly. Now with the textures attached to the correct flags, let's do a quick render. As you can see now, there are some definite changes to our terrain. Let me take a minute to attach proper textures to each of the flags.
I have now assigned texture maps to different flags and increased the tiling value for each of them as well. As you can see now the results are pretty good. To further improve the results, I am going to quickly create water around the island. For the water, I won't be using any fancy tricks, since this tutorial is not about that. Simply create a plane of the same size as the terrain, and set its proper location. Create a new material for it in the material editor, and change some of its properties like I am doing. For the waves, I am going to use a simple noise map as bump. Increase the bump amount. And in the noise map parameters, increase the X and Y tiling as well. And there you have it. This is a powerful technique that can give you great results in no time. You can use it to create maps for demonstration purposes, add points of interest, use it in your mobile application, or any video game. I do hope you found this tutorial helpful. Please take a second to like and subscribe to my channel. I upload tutorials like these on regular basis. Thank you for watching.